In this video, we're going to cover limits at infinity of polynomial functions and some rational functions. Before that, let us establish the idea that the limit of a over x raised to r as x approaches infinity is equal to zero. Where a is any real number and r is a positive rational number. Let me give you examples using graphs. Let's say we have f of x is equal to 1 over x. So 1 is a real number and then the exponent of x here is a rational number. So this is the graph of 1 over x. So as you can see on the behavior of our f of x, as x increases its value without bound, the y value approaches 0. On the other hand, as x decreases its value without bound, y approaches 0. Another example, let's say we have f of x is equal to negative 7 over x squared. In reference to this graph, as the value of x increases without bound, the y value gets closer to 0. Same here on this side as x decreases without bound. y value approaches 0. This is the graph for 3 over x raised to 4. So same thing as x increases without bound. The y value approaches 0. Same here as x decreases without bound. The y value gets closer to 0. So for example 1, let us try to get the limits at infinity of polynomial functions. So how do we identify the limits at infinity? So let us consider the term with the highest degree. So in this case, negative 3 x cubed would be the term with the highest degree. So if we try to substitute infinity to x, therefore we are dealing with a very large number times a negative. So therefore, this would be negative infinity. Here, we are approaching negative infinity. So if we try to substitute negative infinity to x, that would be negative infinity times negative infinity times negative infinity. It would give you negative infinity. And then if you multiply it to negative 3, it would be positive infinity. Another strategy would be by using factoring. So if we're going to do the limit as x approaches infinity and we have the function, if we factor out x cubed, we would be having here negative 3 plus 2 over x squared. And then applying the theorems, we have limit of x cubed as x approaches infinity times the limit of negative 3 plus 2 over x squared as x approaches infinity. So what we have here would be the limit of x cubed as x approaches infinity times, remember, that the limit of a over x raised to r as x approaches infinity is equal to 0. Here, 2 over x squared would have the limit of 0 as x approaches infinity. Therefore, we would be having the limit of negative 3 as x approaches infinity. 
So if we try to substitute infinity to our x here, we would be having a very large number times negative 3. The limit of a constant is itself. Therefore, the answer here is negative infinity. For this case, we're going to do the same factoring and application of the limit theorems. So what we have here would be the limit of x cubed as x approaches negative infinity. For this part, the limit would be 0. So what we have would be the limit of x cubed as x approaches negative infinity times the limit of negative 3 as x approaches negative infinity. So if we try to substitute negative infinity to x cubed, then we would be having a very large number, which is a negative number. So negative infinity times negative infinity times negative infinity. And then, if we multiply it to a negative constant, then it would be positive infinity. Let us verify using its graph. So this is the graph of negative 3x cubed plus 2x. So as the value of x increases without bound, in this case, let us trace the graph. As the value of x increases without bound, the value of y decreases without bound. So the answer here is negative infinity. So for this one, as x decreases without bound, let's look at the graph, the y value increases without bound. So this is positive infinity. Okay, so let us try to answer some additional examples. Let's say we have the limit of x cubed plus 2x raised to 4 minus 3x as x approaches infinity. So we're going to consider the term to the highest degree, so that would be 2x raised to 4. So applying x approaches infinity, we can have 2 then infinity raised to 4. So we have a very large number raised to 4 would be a positive number times positive 2 would be positive infinity. Let's say we have the limit of negative x raised to 5 plus 2x squared plus 4x raised to 3 as x approaches negative infinity. So we're going to consider negative x raised to 5. So we have negative times negative infinity raised to 5. So we have a very large number raised to 5, a negative number here, so that would be equal to a negative number, times negative 1 here would be positive infinity. If we have the limit of 2x cubed minus x squared plus 1 as x approaches infinity, so we're going to consider this term, and we have 2 times negative infinity raised to 3. So we have a very large number raised to 3 is negative infinity times 2, so that would be a negative infinity. And finally, for this set, we have the limit of 6x cubed minus 5x squared minus x raised to 4 as x approaches infinity. So we have this as our term with the highest degree, and we have negative of infinity raised to 4. So infinity raised to 4, we would be having a very large number times a negative number, and that would be negative infinity. So how about we would like to get the limits at infinity of a given rational function. So when we say rational function, we have a polynomial over a polynomial. So we're going to use this strategy first. So the first step is for you to divide each term of this fraction by the variable x with the highest degree in the denominator. 
So we're going to have x squared. So we will be having x over x squared minus 2 over x squared over 2 x squared over x squared plus 5 over x squared. Of course, do not forget to write the limit notation. And then simplifying, we have the limit as x approaches infinity. So simplifying x over x squared is 1 over x minus 2 over x squared over 2x squared over x squared is 2 plus 5 over x squared. Let us recall the idea that the limit of a over x raised to r as x approaches infinity is equal to 0. So if we would like to get the limit of each term of our fraction here, negative 2 over x squared would have a limit of 0. 1 over x would have a limit of 0. Same with 5 over x squared. So what we have here would be the limit of 0 over 2 as x approaches infinity. So 0 over 2 would be 0. So we're getting the limit of 0 as x approaches infinity. And that would be 0. Let's see, for example, for we have the limit of 4x raised to 4 plus x plus 2 all over 2x raised to 4 minus 3 as x approaches negative infinity. So the variable x with the highest degree in the denominator is x raised to 4. So we have the limit as x approaches negative infinity. And then we're going to use x raised to 4 as a denominator of all the terms of our rational function here. So we have 4x raised to 4 over x raised to 4 plus x over x raised to 4 plus 2 over x raised to 4 over 2x raised to 4 over x raised to 4 minus 3 over x raised to 4. And then let us simplify our function here. So we have 4x raised to 4 over x raised to 4 is 4 minus that would be 1 over x cubed plus 2 over x raised to 4. 2x raised to 4 over x raised to 4 is 2, and then minus 3 over x raised to 4. And again, we need to remember the concept of the limit of a over x raised to r as x approaches infinity is equal to 0. So negative 1 over x cubed would give us a limit of 0, same with 2 over x raised to 4, and negative 3 over x raised to 4. So what's left would be 4 over 2. And 4 over 2 is 2. The limit of a constant is itself. Therefore, the answer here is 2. For this example, we have x cubed as the variable x with the highest degree in our denominator. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity. So x raised to 4 over x cubed minus x squared over x cubed plus 2 over x cubed over x cubed over x cubed plus 2 x squared over x cubed minus 8 over x cubed. Simplifying, we have x minus 1 over x plus 2 over x cubed over 1 plus 2 over x minus 8 over x cubed. Continuing, we have this would be limit is 0, 
Same here. Same as 2 over x and negative 8 over x cubed. Again, we're using the limit of a over x raised to r as x approaches infinity is equal to 0. So what we have here is the limit of x over 1 as x approaches infinity, or simply x. And then, trying to substitute infinity to x, we have infinity. Now let us consider other strategies in getting the limits at infinity of rational functions. If the given function has the degree of the numerator less than the denominator, then the limit is equal to zero. In our previous example, we have x minus 2 over 2x two squared plus 5 as x approaches infinity. So here, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Therefore, the limit is 0. Or you can also do the limit of x over 2x squared as x approaches infinity. Trying to simplify this, this would be the limit of 1 over 2x as x approaches infinity. So remember that if we have a number over the variable x and then x approaches infinity, that is equal to 0. Next, if we have the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, the limit is either positive infinity or negative infinity. So, let's say we have this function. So, in the numerator, x raised to 4 would be the highest degree, and in the denominator, we have x cubed. So, giving us the limit of x raised to 4 over x cubed as x approaches infinity. Simplifying, we have x raised to 4 over x cubed, that would be x. And trying to evaluate the limit of x as x approaches infinity, this would be positive infinity. Okay, if we substitute infinity to the variable x. And finally, if we have the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, the limit is the ratio of the coefficients of the highest degree. For example, 4 x raised to 4 has the highest degree in our numerator and we have 2x raised to 4. Therefore, we have the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 4x raised to 4 over 2x raised to 4. If we try to simplify, we have 4x raised to 4 over 2x raised to 4. This would be cancelled, so I have 2. The limit of a constant is itself, so we're getting the limit of 2. Therefore, this is 2. Or, just get the value of the coefficients of the variable with the highest degree, and that would be 4 divided by 2. So we have 